Hello, you guys. I know, I know. We just finished this current school year and I am already here with a teacher planner video. I know, I must be kind of like in love with my job or something. <laughs> so I just wanted to show you guys my teacher planner for next year. And so just to kind of give you a little bit of a background on what I do, I work in a virtual environment. So that means my school is all online. We do have some face-to-face -face time with the kids, but not in like a classroom setting. So I am not a standard teacher. I'm a licensed English teacher, but right now I am in an advisory role and I always call that like guidance counseling light. So I don't do any of like the social emotional pieces because I'm not licensed to do that. But we as advisors, we take on a lot of like the course placement. We do like phone calls with the kids to kind of make sure they're on track with their classes and support them in that way. I field a lot of questions just kind of generally about our school and processes and things like that. I will help kids with like transcript reading so a lot of those like guidance duties we do four-year planning with our students we do just just kind of all of those things kind of summed up into one I'm sure I could go on and on <laughs> with a whole list about what I do but that is why I have kind of decided to Franken plan this next school year I have wanted to love the teacher planner so much <laughs> I wanted to love it so so much you guys I I love how cute it is and I love that all of the pages are like inspiring and that kind of thing but I just couldn't get on board with the layout because I don't teach like a you know a few sections of different classes like I don't teach English 10 for example I do teach a class called high school success which is simply that it like teaches students how to be successful in high school and maybe even start thinking about that post-secondary planning so that is kind of where I am at I am still kind of in limbo with how exactly I'm going to use this but I wanted to show you my setup also I did just see the new planners that are coming to Target so I might be like revamping this and picking up one of those because they're just so so dang cute like I don't even know I have a problem whenever there's a new planner in my face I feel like I have to buy it is that is that wrong <laughs> part of it is to show you guys like that's part of it because I know that a lot of you guys come here for flip throughs and that kind of thing and I definitely want to deliver on those but I also want to make sure that I have the best setup possible and that I have options like I am somebody who always wants to like revamp my planner and wants to like move into something new so so happy planner and like having a lot of happy planners around me definitely gives me the flexibility to do that and to Franken plan. Long story short, this is my current teacher setup and I hope it gives you some ideas if you're maybe not like a traditional classroom teacher or even if you are, like this might work really well for you. And again, I work in a high school environment. So if you're elementary, this might be something that you can adapt or use in, in your environment as well. So this is the cover of the new student planner from the box kit. I just loved it. I think it's so cute and bright and fun. And I think that it will motivate me throughout the school year. So let's just go ahead and get into it. I did a full flip through, but you guys, this yellow inside, I love it. Now I see why Heather Kell loves her yellow. It's so bright and so fun and just motivating. And I just love it so much. The first thing I have in here is I added this cute teacher folder. May your coffee be strong and your students be calm for reals. The cool thing about working in a virtual environment though, is like, while we might have a lot of communication with our students, we don't necessarily have to manage behavior. So having my students be calm is not necessarily something I have to super worry about unless they're super stressed out in, in a different format. So classroom management is not something that I deal with on an everyday basis. We do have like a classroom setting where we teach and where we get to like talk with our students and that kind of thing. But again, I don't necessarily have to walk into a room and worry about like what is the behavior going to be like all day long. So that is kind of a bonus to working in a virtual environment because I get questions a lot about what it's like to work in a virtual environment and if anybody has questions about like my school my job anything like that you can leave those down in the comments below and I'll answer them to the best of my ability of course some things are going to be confidential and I'm not really able to talk about but other things I'm totally open with so I just have a few of the teacher stickers in here some of them came with the teacher planner which I did actually pick up honestly for like for the covers because they're so dang cute I might change those over at the beginning of the school year but just a couple of teacher stickers that I can have I do take this teacher planner with me to like our staff meetings and stuff just to have my schedule and to have a way to write things down. This is my front page. I'm really excited about it. It's so cute. I love this. This 
this is so adorable I love it so much and I'm waiting on my vinyl name stickers to get here I just <laughs> ordered them so my mrs. Joseph is gonna go right here then this is just kind of like standard stuff that's in here so two years on two pages that comes in the student planner course contacts class schedule I'm not sure if I'm gonna use these or if I'm gonna tape them together yet I will definitely keep you guys posted what I'm thinking about doing is you know writing down all the other advisors here and maybe like the teachers in specific courses that I work with so I work with only 10th graders so I might write down like all of the 10th grade teachers that I work with here and then like the advisors that I work closely with over here so that's what I'm thinking right now and this is the August dashboard in the student planner and so this is the way that I'm gonna use it. I'm definitely gonna use the journal space because that's so much fun. I'm gonna use the important dates to write down like big meetings we have coming up, days off of school, that kind of thing. So I'm gonna use that section. This section is gonna be for staff birthdays. My goal is to at least say happy birthday, if not send a card or a postcard to all of the staff that I work with for their birthday. This I'm just gonna use as like school stuff. So this is like a small currently section. It's hard to see with the way the lighting is right now, but it is a small like currently section. Section. And so maybe like what am I loving about school? What am I thankful for in my job? What am I thinking of in my job that kind of thing? And then this is gonna be a small like monthly just general checklist. So that's how I'm gonna use that I don't get a substitute. So I'm probably gonna have to repurpose this page I might put a piece of like notebook paper over it and just kind of tape it to that side Like I've done with some other pages in here, but I don't get a substitute I know I could repurpose like the titles and stuff in here if you're a teacher that either doesn't leave your planner for a substitute or like doesn't use the substitute pages and you've repurposed this let me know in what ways you have repurposed it I might be able to get some ideas from you guys so leave those down in the comments below on the back of the substitute page is the teacher dashboard so this comes each month in the teacher planner and I wanted to use this to track things that will go along with my student learning goals so that's kind of one of the ways that we are evaluated in our job is based on our student learning goals and the data that we collect around those goals each year I'm thinking about like my top five tasks that relate to those goals or that are specific like student needs like right now these are like the top five tasks I need to do this month's goals to accomplish my end goal so that's what I'm gonna use that for my focus of the month so this is either gonna be like an emergent need for a student an emergent need for a family or something to go along with my student learning goal or our PLC goal so that is something that I'm gonna use that space for student birthdays so I have just over 200 students on my caseload typically which is a lot but I really want to send them birthday like postcards or something I feel like postcards are pretty inexpensive and it's a nice way to connect with my students I thought that that would be nice I'm gonna try really hard to do that we also get like rolling new students so we have rolling enrollment so we're always getting new students so keeping this up to date might be kind of challenging but I definitely want to try I think it would be really nice to be able to send postcards and cards out to the families that I work with and then I'm not sure how I'm gonna use this space yet this was like another important date section but I didn't feel like I needed any of that if there's like an important date that goes along with my PLC goals or my student learning goal I might put that here like you have this coming up due pretty soon pull this data that kind of thing I might put that there I might use it as like a motivational section in my personal planner I put motivational quotes in a space like this so I might use that space like that so we'll just have to kind of see how things go but that is how I'm gonna use my double dashboard situation and then these notes I definitely just wanted to have some sticky notes like as a teacher even even as a work from home teacher I cannot have enough sticky notes <laughs> they are one of my favorites this page I'm actually really excited about so the top part I'm probably going to repurpose because I don't get classroom volunteers so if you have repurposed this section specifically let me know but this is going to be a log of the special events and field trips that I attend next school year at my school every Friday there's going to be a field trip available for teachers and students to attend which is really cool I really like that and teachers are required to go to at least six of those which is totally doable there are gonna be a lot of really fun events planned and then we are required to plan at least one of those events throughout the year so I'm really excited I have some really fun ideas so I'm gonna use this section to kind of track the field trips that I attend that kind of thing we also are required to go to like some information sessions where we share information about our school with families I might track those in there as well so that's how I'm gonna use that and then it also has 
has a classroom checklist on the back. And I was figuring since I have a field trip to plan, this is where I'm going to keep track of who is attending my field trip. So I will have that information there as well. So just as a quick checklist, getting into the meat of the planner. So this is all the student planner and you'll see that I have two monthly sections. So this is the first section that I'm probably going to be using more on my like day to day. So this monthly section I'm going to be using to keep track of meetings. If we have like a 504 or an IUP meeting that I have to attend, if we have staff meetings, if we have AVID site team meetings, I am on our AVID site team. If you don't know what AVID is, I can leave a link to that down below if your school does not have AVID, but it's an amazing program that helps kids get to college essentially in, in a nutshell. There's a lot more to it than that, but that's kind of a nutshell. This is the monthly layout from the student planner. And the reason why I chose that is because I really like the monthly goals here. So I have another place to reference goals that I have to hit this month. I also really love the monthly to-do list and I love that I could repurpose that if I wanted to. And then the did you know facts down here also really fun. So it just kind of makes me feel like I am really using my planner to its potential. On the back of that, I just taped the first week that we are actually back to school. So if you can see that the Monday the 20th is actually our first day back. So I took out the other weeks because I just wasn't going to use them. And then this is another don't forget list just for the week. So if I have phone calls to return, if I have stuff going on, I can use this don't forget list. Upcoming tests. So like I said, I work with the AVID program at my school as well. Part of that is helping our students, you know, bump up their study skills in tutorial sessions. And so part of that is knowing which tests those students have coming up. And so it would be nice to, you know, know which tests the students all have kind of as a collective and which classes they're all taking. If there's something big that they need to study for, that is going to be an awesome space. I can also like cover this up and use it as something else. So I, I like that that is a space that I have available to use from multiple things. And then a little journaling space. Like as a teacher, I'm always learning and that kind of thing. So I love that there is that little space. I love the weekly setup for the teacher planner. It's not coming off very true to color because it's a light color, but these boxes are different colors. And so it will help me to stay organized. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to use each box because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just, you know, because it's a student planner, typically you have seven classes on a schedule. So I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to use them all. My thoughts right now are advisory, high school success, AVID, meetings, and then I'm not sure about the last ones here because I don't need a to-do section because I have some to-do lists over here. So these actually came out of the big planner and I have repurposed them. So if you don't know, the difference between a big planner and a classic size is the number of rings they have. A classic has nine, a big has 11. So basically I just cut off the last two rings at a place that I thought was, you know, reasonable. And this takes me through my full work day. So I could start as early as 6am if I want to. And typically I'm done by about 430. And this is where I'm going to log my phone calls with my, my students or schedule them out. So I have this kind of running schedule and I have one in here for each day. Also on the back here, I have the top priorities. I have a get it done and then a take note. So I have a note section here for each day already ready to go. So there is that. And I have one of those for each day. And again, phone calls are a big way that we communicate with families, that we meet with them, that kind of thing. So having an hourly section in here is awesome. That's why I was using an hourly planner for a while for my teacher planner, because I needed that ability to schedule things out like that. But having these in a planner where I can actually utilize it to also keep track of my day is awesome. I put this bookmark in here just to kind of keep track of the, the weeks at a glance. I also love the weekend in the student planner. It's awesome. I love that it's just this two column so I could use it as an extra checklist if I wanted to. If I have something going on on the weekends, like maybe, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I have prom or graduation or something to attend that can go in here. Or maybe I just have grading to do. I can definitely put tasks to do in here. So I do have weekend space, but it's set up differently, which I really like. And yeah, I have that same setup for each month. So I'm not necessarily going to go through every month, but I do have the double dashboard set up every every month. So, and then on the back of the other months, because in August it had the substitute page on there, I just pasted, well not pasted, I used double stick tape to just add a section of notebook paper. So I just put 
the cute paper that looked like the sugar and spice planner on here on the other side of the dashboard because I didn't need what was on the other side. So that is the whole first section and I have that set up all the way through, I think it goes through June or July because you know, sometimes I do have things that are going on in July. We do like summer marketing sessions. I might consider teaching summer school next year. We'll have to see. I'm pretty sure there's a, a big pool of for them to draw from of teachers who want to teach summer school because it is an online environment. Environment. So there's May, June. Okay, so June, I just have the one dashboard. I don't have the second one because I, you know, we only have a few weeks in June with our students. So I didn't need all of that. And our student learning goals wrap up in April and May. So I didn't need, I didn't need all of that. So this planner does go all the way through July though. So if you are looking for a planner that will take you through July, the student one is great. I pulled this actually out of my daughter's kids planner because it's so cute and I thought it was perfect in here. And I just pulled this in because you can never have too many folders and I like them as like separating tools as well. So this is the monthly section from the teacher planner. So not only did I love the dividers, but I needed one more monthly section to kind of track a few other things. So this monthly section is going to be used to track my daily phone call totals. And so we kind of make a goal with our school to hit 75 calls per day. That's like our, our agreement about phone calls. And the reason for that is because phone calls are a big way that we reach out to families and kind of encourage them to stay active in school and that kind of thing and just kind of really engage with them. And so 75 phone calls per day, uh, per day, no, 75 phone calls per month is kind of the, the goal that we hit. So I want to make sure that I am planning that I'm having either enough phone calls. If there's a student also that I noticed that is not getting very many phone calls, I might leave that in the notes section and really prioritize chatting with them because it's not just about the number of phone calls. It's really prioritizing talking to each student and making sure that every single student is engaged. So that is kind of the goal that I have set for myself around that. And so I have a full year to go through that. So this is the first week that would have been in the teacher planner. And I actually grabbed this idea from Heather Kell. She's repurposing her teacher planner as a social media planner, which is awesome. But I am repurposing this just one page out of the weekly section to keep track of notes that I need to you know, go with around phone calls. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So I have up to five weeks that I can utilize for notes around that just to really make sure that I am on top of phone calls and on top of all of that stuff. So I have all the way through, I feel like I have September through May. So August, we only have a couple of weeks. June, we only have a couple of weeks. So the 75 call total is not really possible in just like two weeks, but trying to get 75 phone calls over four weeks is definitely possible. I have September through May in here. And then I have another folder because I love this folder number one and again I like to use them as like separators and then I have a whole bunch of really cute notebook paper in here just because it's nice to have a space to keep notes and then back here I have checklists and so the way that I'm going to utilize these this year is we get you know we have rolling enrollment so we have new students that come in and we keep track of them in like a teacher kind of tracking system where we you know as a team of teachers all the teachers that the student has on their schedule, as well as their advisor and counselor as needed. We'll check in with them, make sure they're getting adjusted as needed. We will make sure that, you know, they are moving forward in their classes, that kind of thing. So this is a great way that I'm going to be able to make sure that I am on top of all of those new students. So as I get a new student, their name is going to go on the checklist and I'm going to make sure that I have like an initial welcome call with them. And then I'm going to be checking in with them each week until they don't need that support anymore. So that is one way that I'm going to use these checklists. We also do the same thing for students who we consider to be what we call off cohort or, you know, late graduate students. So we call that grad support. And so we're just supporting them to get closer towards graduation. So I will also do the same thing. So I'll make sure that I have a welcome call with them and then a check in with them at least once a month for those kids. So same thing. As soon as I get a grad support note, I will make sure that I keep track of those in here. So that is all going to be in here with the checklists. And I'm probably going to rearrange these because it looks like there's a notes page here. But that's how I'm going to use my teacher planner this year. So it'll be a lot of tracking. I'm hoping that it will make my year go really smoothly. I'm hoping that I will have every single thing that I need and I will definitely keep you guys up to date on how this Franken planning is working out for me. If any of you guys have Franken planned a teacher planner, let me know some ideas and things that you have added in. Or if you Franken planned a student planner to use as a teacher planner, let me know that as well. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up for me. If you are 
are new around here, hey, my name is Caitlin and this is Beans and Monkeys. I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button down below and become a member of our BAM fam. If you are one of my current subscribers, thank you so much for being here. You guys are so wonderful. I absolutely adore you guys. Here is your internet hug for the day. And if you wanna find me on other social sites, you can find me over on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And by the way, you guys, have fun today.